In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, clearly tonight we gather in a spirit of deep joy and great thanksgiving as we welcome among us the gift of a new priest, deacon, soon to be Father Chad Mitziak. Welcome you all to this celebration, especially the members of his family. A very, very proud night for you, obviously. And the many members of his home parish, St. Francis Xavier and Camrose, two busloads that came here this evening, and another busload from Teresa's, I think, St. Teresa's. So clearly a sense that we want to rejoice together tonight in God's fidelity to us, God who never fails to provide the church with the ministers that she needs. Let us now humbly acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest.
let us pray. Lord our God, who in governing your people make use of the ministry of priests, grant a persevering obedience to your will to this deacon of your church, whom you graciously choose today for the office of the priesthood, so that by his ministry and life he may gain glory for you in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. Moses said to the Lord, why have I not found favor in your sight that you laid the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a suckling child to the land that you promised on oath to their fathers? I am not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, gather for me 70 of the elders of Israel whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. I will come down and talk with you there and I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them. And they shall bear the burden of the people along with you so that you will not bear it all by yourself. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, now as an elder myself and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as one who shares in the glory to be revealed, I exhort the elders among you to tend the flock of God that is in your charge, exercising the oversight not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you do it, not for sordid gain, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord.
Let the one who is to be ordained priest come forward, Deacon Chad Michuk. I am present. Do you know him to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendations of those concerned with his formation, I testify that he has been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and of our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose this, our brother, for the order of the priesthood. Tonight, the Archdiocese of Edmonton gathers in a spirit of profound thanksgiving and great joy. We rejoice in the gift of a new priest, Chad Nitschek, who will lead and serve the people of God in this local church. Deacon Chad, soon to be Father Chad, you have been journeying for a long time under God's grace toward this moment. And at some point along your life's path, you heard the Lord calling you to serve him as a priest. There was awakened within you an inner conviction that you could not do otherwise than follow him. And with you, we are all grateful to the Lord that his summons has brought you to this moment of ordination to the ministerial priesthood. Now, in a few moments, I shall ask Deacon Chad some questions. This interrogation forms part of the ordination rite, and it aims at having the candidate declare before the church his intention to exercise the priestly ministry. Now, at one level, this interrogation serves to confirm the freedom and the resolve with which Deacon Chad is responding to his call to priesthood. More deeply, though, it points to another dialogue at the heart of the life of every priest, one that provides consolation and strength as he assumes the burden of responsibility and that shapes the direction of his ministry. I speak, of course, of the dialogue the mutual interrogation that takes place between the priests and the Lord himself. Moses is an exemplar. In the account this evening from Numbers, we hear that he's he feeling the heavy burden of shepherding the people of Israel, and he cries out to God. Moses boldly interrogates God, asking rather pointed questions about his calling. God hears, and God responds. At first, by directing Moses to appoint elders to help him and to gather them at the tent of meeting. But then, God says something wondrous and beautiful. What he says is this, I will come down and talk with you there. Moses will not have to figure things out on his own. God already knows what he's doing and about to do and will work through ready and patient dialogue with his servant to bring his saving purpose to fulfillment. Deacon Chad, you've been engaged in dialogue with our Lord for many years now. You've questioned yourself. You've interrogated God. And you've allowed God to query you as you sought to know his will. And you brought this searching to the community of the church, where the questioning continued to unfold in dialogue with those members of Christ's body charged with the ministry of vocational accompaniment. Tonight in the ritual interrogation, the church formally confirms your call, and together we rejoice in the yes that you've given to the Lord. Do not think, though, that this is where the dialogue ends. Henceforth, as St. Peter explains it, you assume the joyful yet heavy responsibility of oversight of the portion of the people of God entrusted to you. So like Moses, do not be afraid to question God, even pointedly as you encounter situations and challenges. 
And as God once promised Moses, he will always come down and talk with you where you are. Now by this, I do not mean that you should expect to hear voices. If that happens, you and I will need to have our own mutual interrogation in my office. <laughs> what it does mean is that our Lord will never leave you to your own devices. As you ponder his sacred word, as you contemplate his love in prayer, as you seek out the counsel and wisdom of your brother priests, God will speak and show you what you are to do and point out to you the way you are to go. And moreover, as a priest, you are to facilitate that same loving dialogue between God and his people. As with you, God also wills to come down and talk with all of us, his children. That dialogue happens most wondrously and effectively in the church's celebration of the sacraments, where you, as priest acting in persona Christi, will bring Christ's voice to the people who express their longing to hear it. In the celebration of baptism, for example, the people give voice to the Christian faith, and the Lord, through your enunciation of the baptismal formula, welcomes the recipients into the communion of the church. In the Eucharist, the people express their heart's desire for the Lord's merciful presence and hear him say, through you, this is my body, this is my blood. In the sacrament of penance, instituted, as we heard in the gospel by Christ himself, the people confess their sins. And hear the Lord respond with certain forgiveness as you pronounce the words of absolution. The dialogue with, that you will have with your people, Chad, must also be exercised, of course, non-sacramentally. The Holy Father has launched the entire church on a synodal process in which, through the mutual listening of all God's people, we seek together to identify and follow the movement of the Holy Spirit. As Saint Peter admonishes, the priest is not to lord it over the people, but instead must listen carefully to their hearts and voices as he and his people together exercise their co-responsibility for the mission of the church. Thank you, Chad, for placing your complete trust in the Lord and answering his call to serve his people as a priest. Do not fail to turn to him at all times, confident that in his own mysterious ways, God will come down and talk with you and indicate what you are to do. Place your complete faith in him now as you step forth to express your commitment and your resolve. Deacon Chad, before you proceed to the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your resolve to undertake this office. So I ask you, do you resolve to discharge unfailingly with the guidance of the Holy Spirit the office of the priesthood in the presbyteral rank as a trustworthy co-worker with the order of bishops in feeding the Lord's flock? I do. Do you resolve to carry out the ministry of the word worthily and wisely in the preaching of the gospel and the teaching of the Catholic faith? I do. Do you resolve to celebrate the mysteries of Christ reverently and faithfully, according to the tradition of the Church, especially in the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation, for the praise of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? I do. Do you resolve to implore with us the mercy of God for the people entrusted to you, with zeal for the commandment to pray without ceasing? I do. Do you resolve to be united more closely each day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all? I do with the help of God. Do 
you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Let us now pray, dearly beloved, to God, the Almighty Father, that he pour forth heavenly gifts in abundance on this his servant, whom he has chosen for the office of the priesthood. Let us kneel. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Joseph, Saint Anne, Saint Peter and Saint Paul, Saint Andrew, Saint John, Saint Mary Magdalene, Saint Stephen. Saint Ignatius, Saint Lawrence, Saint René, Saint Isaac, Saint Jean, Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity. Saint Agnes, Saint Cecilia, Saint Philomena, Saint Gregory, Saint Augustine, Saint Athanasius, Saint Basil. Saint Martin, Saint Francois, Saint John Paul, Saint Catherine, Saint Teresa of Jesus, Saint Therese of the Child Jesus. Saint Benedict, Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, Saint Francis, Saint Jean Marie, Saint John Henry, Saint Pio, Saint Marie. Saint Marguerite, Saint Faustina, Saint Marguerite, Saint Catherine, Saint Andre, all holy men and women, saints of God. Sin. Lord, us from everlasting death, Lord, us by your incarnation. 
salvation. By your death and resurrection. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Be merciful to us sinners. Protect your holy church. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Bless this chosen man. Bless and sanctify this chosen man. Sanctify and consecrate this chosen man. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Form your clergy in faithful service. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Jesus, Son of the living God, Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Hear us, we pray, O Lord our God, and pour out upon this your servant the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that you may surround with your rich and unfailing gifts he whom we present to your fatherly care for consecration. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand.
draw near, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity and bestower of all graces, through whom all things progress, through whom everything is made firm, who by the power of the Holy Spirit, in order to form a priestly people, establish among them ministers of Christ, your Son, in various orders. Already in the earlier covenant, there arose offices instituted by mystical rites, so that when you had set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in order and dignity to join them and assist them in their work. Thus, in the desert, you instilled the spirit of Moses in the minds of 70 wise men. With them as helpers, he more easily governed your people. So too, over the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's fullness, that the number of priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, the Apostle and High Priest of our confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself unblemished to you and made his apostles, who were consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. To them you added companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation through all the world. Now we pray, O Lord, provide also for our weakness this helper whom we need for the exercise of the apostolic priesthood. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, to this your servant the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within him the spirit of holiness. May he hold the office second in order, received from you, O God, and by the example of his manner of life, may he inspire right conduct. May he be a trustworthy co-worker with our order, so that by his preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may he be a faithful steward of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed through the cleansing waters of rebirth and refreshed from your altar, and that sinners may be, rec may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May he be joined to us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to him and for the whole world. Thus, may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ become your one people, brought to perfection in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do, imitate what you will handle, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who have willed that your priests should minister at the holy altar and serve your people, grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray, that the labors of your servants may constantly please you, and in your church bear that fruit which lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. At this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and me, your unworthy servant, with the order of bishops and this your servant who has been ordained today as a priest for the church, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be changed, but only say the word.
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that unified to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty, through Christ our Lord. At the beginning of Mass this evening, I neglected to note the presence of my brother Bishop here, Bishop Stephen Hero, now of the Diocese of St. Albert, Bishop Stephen. Good to see you. Welcome back. Thank you. And now, Father Chad. That has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Congratulations. <laughs> The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Be. 